Hey everyone, welcome to my channel again. Today I'm talking about composition in Lightroom. So there's some tools that are not really very intuitive to access, but are quite useful once you know they're there. On this particular photo here, the sunrise, it's using a rule of thirds, and most of you are probably familiar with rule of thirds. If I come over here and I turn the crop overlay on, I get this crop overlay and you can see how I crop the image. It's breaking the image up into basically nine equal sections with a line a third of the way down and then a third of the way from the bottom and then a line that's a third of the way from the right and one from the left. Then you normally want to have something of interest on where the lines cross and like your horizon you want to run along one of these lines uh, to, to make it look proportionate that's pleasing to the eye so i could i could do that or i could bring this down here something like that um, and and that's rule of thirds um, but there's other options inside of lightroom that are actually quite good and quite useful and to access these uh, all you have to do is on your keyboard press o once you have it open the, the letter o and it'll cycle around and you get quite a few. This is this is a diagonal layout. I'm going to press a zero or O again. And you get basically four quadrants. And then you get these uh, triangles where you would put something of interest in each triangle, I believe, or try to get uh, like maybe right along through there and do something to that nature. Um, and I think if you open that, up, it's probably pretty close to rule of thirds, right? Um, but so we have this, which is quite useful for diagonal lines that we were just talking about. We've got the quadrant. Um, this is like rule of thirds, except it's it's brought in farther. But you have the lines are closer together as compared to like rule of thirds, so it's more center focused. And then if I press zero again. This is what they call the golden spiral, and it, it's it's based on a Fibonacci number, which is a mathematical algorithm. It's supposedly pleasing, and when you come into this particular one here, uh, you can actually cycle this around by pressing Shift O, and it'll move it around. And the intent is to put something along this this where the the circle comes together is kind of like your center of focus, something like that. And you would end up with something of this nature, which uh, I think whenever we go back and look at it, it's probably still pretty, whoops, sorry, still pretty close to rule of thirds, um, but not quite. So these are quite good. So I was looking at like this particular, the, the diagonal cross here. I have this picture I took of this shipwreck in Cornwall which kind of lends itself to it, kind of. I mean, you can go through and, um, you know, like my center of focus is here. Maybe I want to shift this over. So I've got the walls along the lines where, where the, the, the inlet comes in and the shipwreck's kind of in the center piece here, and I can do something like that. And that, that looks pretty pretty pleasing to the eye. And then the one that I did like was this uh, golden spiral. And so you can do a lot of interesting things with this. I mean, if I use this here, so I think the, the idea is you have a center of focus here, but then you have other things of interest along the line. And so in this case, I've got the tree that's like my center of focus. And the... Uh, I've got a reflection of the tree in the, the water, right? To, and that goes along the line. And then I have this other tree over here on the side that can become another, you know, along that line. And if I put that together, I get kind of this. I, I kind of like that. Now, the other things that you can use this for, for example, if I come in here in this picture of a building, right, I can I can open up my, my grid here and, and well, I can open up my overlay and I can look at this grid, right? And I can make sure that, because in this picture, I mean, like the church is, is the, one of the focus or the focus, right? And I want to make sure the church is straight up and down inside of 
the photo, right? And I can see by using this grid that it's pretty good. I'm pretty close. And I have this other one over here, right? I can do the same thing here with these grid lines, and I can make sure that the church is somewhat in focus, or not in focus, but but somewhat straight up and down. Or when I got something like this, right? This is completely out of alignment now, right? And if I, if it's not going to be as nice as if I get this straight like that. So this here, I don't really use this either, but it's for doing things like if I was going to do a 8x10, right? Well, this shows me the crop for an 8x10. I just multiply these numbers by 2. I get 8x10 or a 4x5, 4x6, 8x12, right? So I can do these things here. I can crop them all and, and get them to be the right size for the photograph, right? Normally, I mean, if, if you're printing right out of light or Lightroom, then this would probably work great, but I'm, I'm not, so I, I, don't, I wouldn't use this, but it's, it's there. So on these crop overlays that are for uh, cropping for uh, basically different aspect ratios, so 5 by 7s, 4 by 5s, and so on, if you have one in there that doesn't, you don't see, whenever you have the crop overlay tool on, if you come up to tools and go over to crop guide overlay, you can see you have all the overlays that are that are out here. But down here at the uh, bottom, there's choose aspect ratios. If you click on that, these are all the aspect ratios. So one by one, eight and a half by 11, four by three, 16 by nine. And if you're making a larger print, you just multiply, right? Uh, so this could be like an eight by six or a, a 16 by 12, is that what it would be? So all those things, well, you can see four by six, eight by 10, different screen sizes with a 16 by nine is uh, 1080p. You can turn these on, so let's turn on 16 by 9 and we click OK and you can see we have the 16 by 9 aspect ratio that's actually inside of this uh, overlay now. The other, so I've already talked about the angle, so this is more like if you have something and you want equal amounts of uh, Either you're going to break things into quadrants or you want equal amount of things on either side or equal amount of balance, I suppose is a better way of putting it. So this, I've got this, and this is going to be, so, I mean, let's crop this way in just to show you. Um, I've got the center of the tree right along the line, and then I've got this. Well, actually, let's do this. Since we're going to do this, let's do it like this. Now I've got the center of the tree where it, where it splits between the reflection and the, uh, the tree, the real tree, not the reflection. And I've split it, and of course my, my uh, horizon's not quite straight, but you kind of get the idea, right? Now I put the tree in the center, then I've got it balance all around, right? Except I probably should have chopped this other tree out here, but you, you get the idea, right, of how this works. So this is uh, the overlay called triangle. I mean, if we come up here in tools and we look at the overlay, the uh, crop guide, they call this triangle. Sometimes it's referred to as the golden triangle. Um, it's, it's used a lot or sometimes in art. But what we have is, is basically four triangles of two different sizes on the screen. So we have one line that comes across and intersects from corner to corner, and then another one that comes from the corner to the center line from both corners, right? As you can see here, I mean, this is one example where I, I've cropped the picture and I have the line that runs up through here which it corresponds with my hill and the rocks on uh, over here. You want to put your, your uh, subject along these lines and preferably where they intersect. So I have the pool down here at this first intersection. I've got the part of the top of the stream at this other intersection. The shipwreck, if I cycle this around, I now, so as you can see, I've skewed this around and everything. The shipwreck is on where this line intersects, because this is my main subject. Uh, my angles co confer or conform with the angle on the hill here. As you can see, this runs up and that goes over here. I've got my, uh, my subject matter right here where, this, where these two uh, lines intersect. 
And whenever I'm done, I get this, right? So, which surprisingly enough looks pretty good as far as this picture goes. So, um, so my subjects here, remember the lines came up and my diagonal line goes all the way across here. So, so that is how to use the triangle crop overlay. You've got a lot of different options under there when you select the crop overlay tool. Look at those um, and then you're going to press O, not zero. And then you can press it. So if you're going to one like this, you can hold down the shift key and press O again and it will cycle it around the picture. Use whatever one works for you. Like I said, I've kind of got to this golden spiral thing and I use it for some of my landscapes now. We still have the rule of thirds and in my mind when I'm taking the photograph I a lot of times I'm I'm thinking in rule of thirds even though I'm when I come back and I do post-production I'm using this uh, golden spiral or or in the case you know like in this case right I mean I'm pulling up this picture and those angles work really well to you know basically figure out what we're going to do with this image um, I can pull this out. I can, you know, move it around and do, a, you know, several different things with it. And I can go with something like this where I've got the the ship in the center, right, at the center of focus. And I've got the, you know, the vertical lines. I don't want to call them leading lines, but they kind of are. I mean, they're, they're bringing your eye back down into this uh, shipwreck here. So anyway... I hope you've enjoyed today's video, and I look forward to seeing you again. Take care.